You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. You are supposed to support one of the biggest acts, probably one of the biggest rappers of all time, some people would argue, aye, uh, Naz, aye. two or three years ago, aye. before you done your sound check to end up getting to jail. Aye, man, I did. So you've had a wee bit of roller coaster the last few years. I'm still kind of like that, still kind of searching for my, for my family, you know what I mean? Like, blood is blood and all that, but like, where I belong, kind of thing. Um, Do you feel lost sometimes? Aye, man, aye. Definitely feel lost, like... Like I, listen, I think I feel lost for listening to sort of, uh, other people's perception of me. And that's what I've been focused on, is try to actually just cement myself as a proper top tier lyricist in, in this country, mate, and then hopefully globally, mate. And the last few years in that, it's just been trying to actually learn how to be a man and take responsibility for some of my actions in that. Boom, we're on. What's happening? Today's guest, we've got Scottish rapper Shogun. How about you, brother? Aye, good, mate. Fucking, aye, happy to be here, mate. Happy it's good to, to have you on. Thank you, One thank of my you. own, mate, just aye. up the road. So, yeah, it's good to be here for the audience. This is a Scottish podcast, so you might struggle sometimes, but bear with us. Aye. Only 23. You were in rap battle there. I rap, thought you, rap, rap, game. Rap, rap game. Rap game. I thought you were phenomenal. Thank you, bro. Um, thank you. You were supposed to support one of the biggest acts, probably one of the biggest rappers of all time, some people would argue, aye, uh, Naz, aye. two or three years ago, aye. before you'd done your sound check to end up getting to jail. Aye, man, aye, I did. So you've had a wee bit of roller coaster the last few years, mm -hmm. but now you're here, you're doing your thing. I finally got the heat time. screwed on, and I mean, it's just, it's just about being, like you've been saying to me, just being consistent, and that's what I've been focused on, mate, is try to actually just cement myself as a proper top tier lyricist in, in this country, mate, and then hopefully globally mate and the last few years in that it's just been trying to actually learn how to be a man and take responsibility for some of my actions in that and not just the bad stuff but the good stuff as well and actually be like right I've I've got all this good shit let's not dwell on it let's not just revel in the fact that oh I've got this good for, which was a, I was doing that for so long that like I would perform well and then I'd get I'd just get excited about that and I wouldn't spend the next week or two or month or two actually like going right how can I how can I better this position that I'm in rather than just be happy with it? Mm. So I met like all the experiences for getting lifted at Nas and got a fucking Pullman and then all the shit in between that and then got a low moss, ball in and finally getting up to, you know what I mean? Mm. This, this this point in my life is, it's it's very surreal. It's very surreal. It must have gave you months. some material though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was, it definitely was, it definitely was. Now I've got a stack of about that. <laughs> That are like we the we A four stupid jail paper you get. Mm -hmm. I've got that. Pff, I just shit. I've not even used yet, mate. Yeah, because your videos have been viewed over millions of times, tens aye, of millions. Man. And aye, man. I think I, I'm not just saying this because you're Scottish, but you're one of the best rappers and lyricists I've ever seen or heard. Thank you. It's phenomenal the, the the stuff that you do. Obviously, in your own rap game, they were telling you to slow your stuff down. It's Scottish aye. accent. If we we speak the new. People can't understand. Never mind rap. I know, mate. Do you know what I mean? And I so, rap pretty fucking fast. Sometimes it's like a party trick, kinda. Yeah. Thing. It's like I can do very, very, very intricate and complex syllable uh, alignment, and I understand patterns and I understand music, mate. So it's like I'm. I've just been. I, I, I'm just a a fiend for knowledge, man, and and getting better. At, and I, man, I, ha I have my I have my days where. Where, I, where I, I hate it, and then I have my days where I love it, man. But right now, like, I think I've got back into a place where I absolutely love doing what I do. And that's why you see the the, the jump up in quality. And, you know what I mean? That rap game, they're telling me to, like, slow it down and shit. And for the first couple of weeks, I, I was like, man, what are, they, what are these guys talking about? Like, dumb it down, slow it down, make it easy to understand. I'm like, ah, mate, like, you want me to rap the way I rap, or do you want me to rap the way you use what I rap? Mm -hmm. But I kind of just, like, if you can go back and listen to some of my older stuff and go back listen to my stuff that I've released in the la like since being on that show, like the clarity, that is something mm -hmm. that I definitely I just took on the chin and I went, Do you know what? If I can overpronunciate my words to English people and whatnot with in conversation, then I can do it when I'm rapping, man. And my lyrical ability doesn't need to actually take a hit because of that. So I that took me a couple months to really 
grasp, man. And I that f- f- just thank you for saying that, mate. Honestly, like, mm-hmm. I don't even know what to say, mate. Like I, I'm trying to be the best lyricist in this and country. And that's why you've got to take advice for the people who's lived that, mm-hmm. because it's like. We've got too much ego and it, uh, being for the scheme. Who the fuck are you telling what to uh, do? So uh, it's uh, uh, for me, it's wider. My audience, I had to slow it down. Mm. I had to be saying the word down uh, instead of saying down. It's uh, just uh, certain wee things like that. But for you to go, like other these people know the tools and techniques to get to certain mm-hmm, levels. Mm-hmm. But again, when we're always get barriers up, and don't fucking uh, tell me. How do you know? But they've actually lived it. They're just trying to give you I'm knowledge. Wrong, but if you're starting to now take it in, mm. then you'll go levels, you'll go above mm, and beyond mm, your own mm. dreams and ambitions and then you'll leave the blueprint for, I don't know any other Scottish rappers that have ever made it. You hear I, the odd songs and that, I but... I mean, you had the fucking... Have you ever seen the, the Scottish hip-hop hoax? No. Oh, what, mate? Two guys, mate, two mad chukters for Dundee, mate, fucking syllable and brains and I swear to me, I swear to me, they, nearly, they get signed to Sony, fucking, were meant to tour with D12 and all that. And the only reason they done it is because they pretended they were American. They pretend mm-hmm. like, like pretended they were for hunting like Huntington Beach, California, made up fake backstories, spoke to their mom and dads and their girlfriends in American accents and all that, like proper lived a line and one of them had a mental breakdown and went, I can't do this anymore. That's that's the pinnacle for every cunt before me. That's what cunts look at and go, oh, that's, they got close to getting signed and being famous and all that. Aye, but they lived a fucking lie. Mm-hmm. So like, now you've got a crop of talent like myself, Sherlock, Melrose, uh, Ransom F.A. was on there one. He's a bit more clean cut and all that. But for the people for the schemes, you've got like me, Sherlock, Melrose, McCroy. Then you've got kind of mere abstract people like physics and gasps who are a bit like they're a bit an older generation than ours, but they're still kind of relevant in the Scottish bit. But it's just like you're saying, it's it's sometimes it's too Scottish, mm-hmm. it's too hard to like digest if you're no fee. I said like specifically the West of Scotland and that. Mm-hmm. But I man, it's getting there. It's just we're like five, ten, fifteen years behind some certain scenes and like especially London and Manny and Birmingham and that. So it's just about try to get that synergy with all the all the good, all the talent in this country, mm-hmm. which I feel like like you're saying with the, the, the egos for coming for the scheme, like, I mean, I'm the fucking best. Everybody feels like that. So it's like it's been a struggle trying to get the, all the people who genuinely believe they're the best yeah. to come together and do it like London does, do you know what I mean? Like fucking Because there's a crust to be made as well and there's a business in it and so mm. but as long as you're loving it. Always go back to the start with my guest brother, mm. kind of where you grew up and how it all began. I, well, I grew up in Paisley, Hunter Hill, uh, Todd Home, hung about like Glenburn and that, went to St Andrews Academy. And uh, actually, I wasn't even the first one at my pals that started rapping. I was just like, I think I was the one at my pals that was like, I was in the higher kind of English classes and that, like credit and all that back in the day. I was good with my words, good at writing, and I loved rap, but it was my pal, I think my pal, John Forrest, he was like the first one that came up to us and went like, oh, bro, I'm mad rapping all that, oh, I'm going to go battle lunch and all that, you know what I mean? There was a boy fat lunch that was like, he was like the best rapper in Glenburn. And we were like 12, 13 and all that, and we used to have wee rap battles at the back of the school and all that, and then we'd go and get mad with it and fucking the dark 40 and the gas 40, the tap 40 and all that, like all the 40s up fucking Glenburn get mad with it and there'd be like 70 wee guys. And be lassies all out getting steaming, and then I'd be sitting there on my phone fucking writing raps and all that. Comes back, what you doing? Like, nothing, fuck off. You know, yeah. I was just like, I got into it for everybody else being into it, and then as they kind of stopped being, I just kept going with me. I just kept going with it, and then that ended up in me kind of being, I just became a bit of a fucking recluse because, like, doing my research and watching just stuff that was beyond my years. I got a bit more wisdom than the people that was around me, man. So I started, I was like, I don't want to hang about with people my age, man. I ended up hanging about with people that were a bit older, a bit more nefarious, shall we say. And then got into a bit of trouble and all that. Got into more trouble, wrote more raps. Ended up getting myself kicked out of school. You know what I mean? So I met, like, my whole life's been geared towards me being, like, this mad rebellious figure, mate, for the age, for, for I was young, mate, like, my fucking auntie used to call me Houdini. So <laughs> you, <laughs> Magician. That, uh, you grounded me, mate, and mm-hmm. I was gone, mate, I was out of, mm-hmm. like, he'd say, oh, sit in that corner and fucking think about what you've done, like, turn your back, and I'm, I'm out the corner, I'm away, like, so I've just always had that wanderlust and 
why and meet new people and learn about new cultures and all that. Do you know what I mean? Especially when I was growing up, one of my best friends, uh, Banelli and Clapo, who I called him Banny, he's from South Africa, and that was like the first black boy that I was pals with. I was a what seven, eight year old when I met him, and then like his dad had lived through bloody apartheid. They had like scars in his head and all that, and that was the first time I learned about all that shit. So that's, I started to look at my fucking people in my family a bit differently, like because they were a bit racist and whatnot. I was like, well, Jeffrey Banny's dad's telling me this, and then my uncle Gerald's telling me this. I'm like, okay. So my whole life, man, I've just been a bit of an outsider, but kind of in way, like the popular ones at the same time, like I didn't really know where I fit in. But see, as soon as I found this man, it made ever it made everything make sense made everything make sense like all these feelings and repressed emotions and even guilt for like mad shit that I've done I've got sort of got an outlet now do you know what I mean and it doesn't it doesn't put me it doesn't get me a weekender it doesn't I don't need to get mad with it to have an outlet I don't need to go and fight with people to have to express myself to get this anger and whatnot out I can just write it down that page and actually provide people with content that they can live vicariously through. Not only that, but it can inspire them to get into it themselves, do you know what I mean? Or, or use any of their any other hobbies or passions as outlets for their situation, man, because I didn't necessarily have like the, the hardest upbringing, but it was a single parent and me and all my siblings have different dads. So it was a bit like not, not much of a family unit, do you know what I mean? So I felt like I was kind of like, I was always taken care of, always had stuff on my back, always had food in my belly, always, always eating I wanted. If I didn't get it for my birthday, I'd get it for my Christmas kind of thing. Like, maybe a wee bit behind everybody else, but I was always looked after. But it was more so the emotional side of things. Like, I'm quite a fucking needy guy. I'm quite a emotional, especially when I was younger, man. I was like a fucking angry wee crybaby cunt, you know what I mean? Mm. So... Like I needed that kind of care and attention and then didn't quite get it for the people that I wanted to get it from, got it for other people that... The wrong people? The wrong people, bro. You know what I mean? But I, I, don't, I don't even like saying the wrong people, just... It's other people that's confused uh, as well at uh, the same time. It makes sense uh, to just be getting any attention from anybody mm, would do at that mm, time just to survive. Me personally, I've always wanted a big brother. Always wanted a big brother, man. Always felt like the wee bro always wanted looked after on that so as soon as older boys were like I moan hang about with us moan moan go do this and that I was like easy there's my family there's my family there do you know what I mean and um, I'm a, I think I think that I still kind of I'm still kind of like that still kind of searching for my for my family you know what I mean like blood is blood and all that but like where I belong kind of thing um, do you feel lost sometimes? aye mate aye definitely feel lost like like I, listen, I think I feel lost for listening to sort of other people's perception of me. Do you know what I mean? Like people will have me up here and then they'll have me down here. And confused. It's it's very very confusing. It's like and there's people that will hold you up here and then if you don't see their message and don't message them back that day, that like you end up seeing the message where they send you a paragraph I hate. They're like <laughs> fucking dick how do you patch mm. me? Da da da. Oh, this ship, you love your music. Oh. It's confusing trying to be like a public figure when you're just trying to like be figure out your own shit. Aye, mate. Aye, mate. Mm -hmm. Aye, literally, mate. Literally, bro. So it's a very, very surreal thing. Like going to work with people like Dizzy Rasco and love Dizzy. Shout out to Dizzy. Shout out to Dizzy all day long, man. Mm -hmm. Absolute G, man. Like, mate. Pff, I actually told him when I met him, I was like, "Oh, you a tenor?" Because one of the first albums that I ever stole at a HMV was fucking Maths in English. Mm -hmm. His third album, man. I used to sit and listen. Like, Why are you moving with that pussy? Yo? Move with that pussy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to sit and listen to that playing like fucking Modern Warfare too. He's twenty years deep in the game and still at the top of it. Oh mate, oh, he's been in it since I was in nappies, mate. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> see he sit mm -hmm. like fucking two feet away from him. And he's just like like he's gassed about my shit. Like he's actually like, bro, you're a fucking banging writer. You're a proper good storyteller. Or not. I'm, I'm just like sitting there, like didn't he even sink in till I went home. I was, I came home and I was just like, fuck, I think I should just make like a toast there or something. Mm -hmm. Just pure. Like, how did they? How that come about? You and Dizzy working uh, together? Actually, I was meant to be on a track with him and a guy called LD for uh -huh. six seven. You know, like a drill crew. Uh, 
it was meant to be on that with them through a Scottish the the producer of the track was Scottish Sean Proof and he fucking loves my shit and I love his shit so he was like he kind of sorted it out but I think the label didn't want me on it I think they seen it as too much of a risk or something so it kind of ended up just being LD and Dizzy you know you're a risk anyway Fuck. why do you think that is your nature because I me, me, I think it's a fucking I think it's just because there's never been an artist like me no really like you can be like oh the archetype for me is like Devlin or somebody like Getz a volatile MC that's actually very intelligent but nah I'm my own breed at MC my own breed of artist and I've got a heavy duty bullshit detector and I do struggle to like play the game sometimes do you know what I mean I do struggle to to give the fucking higher ups what they want whilst I'm like crafting what I need out of it so it's like just I'm not so much I'm not that good at a business man see if I had maybe a business head on me mate, like you're only 23 I know you I, learn all that as you go and you just know. it's learning to take more risk and learning to give a wee bit of trust because mm. I'm the same it's <laughs> I'm the same as you but again sometimes we get it wrong where we think I know. maybe I'm fucking wrong maybe it's I me know. that's crazy so trust me I've been sitting there a few times like that and I think what I do I know is I project like past shit on a new situation so like I had a manager and an agent I was with uh, Diplomats of Sound and this guy called fucking Charlie who was like my agent's best friend and they end, he ended up coming into management man and they stole a fuckload of money off of me man like left me homeless in London on my fucking arse to the point where I was having to pay off debt in the jail through a fucking jail phone do you know what I mean? Getting my fucking distributor to send fucking royalties to a fucking landlord so that I don't get chinned for that when I go to the fucking jail because they're pricks. So I still, I see until I see them face to fucking face, which I fucking, I will, man. I will see until I see them and speak to them as men. And they're like, why did you just do that to me when I was fucking 19 year old? Mm -hmm. Why would you lie to my fucking my family and all that so you're going to take care of me and all this shit and how what happened were you supposed to sign supposed to sign a record deal bro no there was like investment money that came in investment from this investor they got and, they, and basically I signed something that I wasn't meant to sign do you know what I mean never got it looked over or nothing never, nah I didn't have a because they, they put it in front of me after I think it was like either my first or second show in London and I was like mad with it and shit. Like I prefer, it was a pretty good show and everybody liked my performance and that's so why I was obviously celebrating. And then they sat down a fucking the the mad record contract in front of me, man, to sign for um a Belgian artist, a track that I was doing with Sony France, and then there was like a couple of other sheets to do with like the Nas show and all that. That went platinum that um his, in his France album, or Belgium aye, or something. Aye, it went fucking went platinum and gold as well. Platinum in Belgium and gold in France, aye, mate. Aye. And you never, get a, my you never get a bean for that? No, no, I, I get paid for it. I get paid I get paid for that. But they let me get that kind of smaller payment and took the fucking tens of thousands of pounds off mm -hmm. me. Do you know what I mean? I don't even like saying the actual amount because it's fucking... Yeah. Do you know but what I mean? you live and learn. I know, mate. It's, it's, it, it's prevails, learning money. Yeah. It's like tuition fee, you know mate. What I mean? That's what I see it as. Yeah. I paid that tuition fee. I was like, mm -hmm. now no, no, I'm clued up. Your you know song, I mean? Vulcan, mm. is hot... <laughs> tens of millions of views all over social media all over <laughs> online how did Wild. that come about so if people check that check this out man you'll see how good Aye. Shogun is unbelievable Shogun, Vulcan yes motherfuckers <laughs> five and a half million views how uh. did that come about <laughs> um, mate honestly I done that tune right after my uncle Henry died because after he died like I kind of seen like an apathetic response for some people in my family because like it was a bit of a troubled guy do you know what I mean he was like f fucking on drugs and that and a bit of a not a wronging but he just lost he, again aye man done shit that he knew he, he didn't want to do but put it that way to get what he needed and uh, he died down south he's died in Croydon moved into Croydon and that to get a wife or a shite up here and fucking just drank himself to fucking death so after that I was just like I just had a like an epiphany, man. I was like, fuck, man, that's my wee uncle. I, like, I didn't even get to say fucking bye to him or nothing. Didn't even get, like, I think the last time I seen him, I gave him, like, a tenner and was moaning because I, you know what I mean? Because he always used to come up and ask for money and I was only getting, like, fucking 70 quid a week or something for, like, a work experience programme that I was on at the time. And I think uh, the last time I seen him, we were no arguing, but I was just moaning at him. I felt like a fucking cunt, man. I felt like a heavy duty 
heavy duty arsehole, man. And I was like in denial about like, nah man, he's no deed nor that like no chance man, he'll just be he'll just be no well nor that and then nah, he was proper. So I fucking um I just sat down and I, I wrote that in like a pure burst on the train going to college. I don't know, it just it just hit us when I sat down the train. I was just thinking about it all the way down to the I was thinking about it every day for months after it and then, I don't know mate I just wrote it in however long it takes to get for Paisley to air What were you doing at college? Uh, sound engineering mate I was just because I thought fucking I need to go and learn about if I, if I, I, I don't know any DJs I don't know any producers I don't have mine set up nor that I need to go and learn about what equipment I need and how to use it and what not and to be honest I just used that time to try and fucking sell weed <laughs> you know mm. like I mean, I was a fucking fan of me, oil, he was all the place, but at that time I was, I think I, I wrote quite a lot of poignant shit because it's like, it's beautiful to be broken in it, so I was heavy broken at that point and I was writing some heavy beautiful shit, man, but I recorded that and it sat on my SoundCloud for like six months, had like 500 plays, mate, like fuck all. I was happy with it at the time because, mate, 50 plays to me was a fucking mm -hmm. lot at that time. So I was like, ah, mate, this is actually all right. <laughs> and then went to go to a music video for a tune called The Effect with a crew that I was in called MFTM. Ended up, the people that were filming it didn't have the right equipment, didn't have the drone and all that. So we're like, fuck it, we'll just film three styles and all that. We'll just get some content that way. I was like, let me do this tune. I want to see if he's like it done Vulcan the guy behind the camera was like fucking do that again done it again put it up three four days later mate it was fucking on the front page I read it I had like a hundred emails two hundred phone calls like my phone was just going zzzz for fucking did that change things for you? Pff, I mean I, it, it changed it changed what it just changed what I was doing it didn't really change my situation I was still living with my mum and all that and like between hers and my ex-girlfriend's gaff and that like but I eventually started putting a lot of money in my pocket and I was like doing two shows a week and interview for big magazines and but just everything man and I was like travelling up and down for London a lot you know what I mean getting the dodgy train tickets for half price mm -hmm. and that <laughs> you know what I mean try to, try to save a buck anywhere mm -hmm. I can mate and I fucking, it was me and my DJ cameo at the time. We were just flying about, got to London, fucking Brighton, fucking anywhere, man. I ended up uh, meeting foreign beggars. And shout out to foreign beggars. OGs, oh, drum and bass and hip hop scene. In, but they kind of, they don't get enough fucking respect, man. They don't. And rest in peace to Ebo Graham as well. He passed away um, this year, well, last year, um, during all this shit. But when I met them, they kind of took us... Pavan, most, mostly Pavan from Foreign Beggars took me under his wing and like proper gave us some good advice, took us on some shows and all that, showed us about the country and stuff, explained the music industry to me and all that and I would never have got to meet all, all these people and, and people like that, at, at, people that I revere if I'd never done that fucking video in that car park that day, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Even like kicking the bottle over accidentally like adds to the aesthetic of the fucking tune and then there's a baby crying at the end. That wasn't a sound effect. That was a fucking real live baby that just was crying in the street and it's pure added. It's like a sense of rebirth at the end of the song. It's like after that, it's my rebirth and all that. I was sat like, this tune's mental, mate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but I just wrote that as like a, a personal attack almost you know what I mean like for the first bit of the tune I'm building myself up and then I go what does that make me been a little bit fucked lately do you know what I mean like is it therapy for you doing all these oh, definitely, writing doing paper and wrapping it out definitely mate it's catharsis it's mm -hmm. therapy it's fucking life saving it's connection it's communication where like sometimes you can't I can't sometimes I can't get my words out the way I want to do you know what I mean but as soon as I sit down and put them into like rhyme form it's like everything I want to say comes up. How hard is it to be a rapper in the UK? <sighs> Fucking... I mean... It's so hard. So you're a rapper, what, you grind, what is it you just I'm, say? I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm like a Kendrick Lamar, mate. Mm -hmm. I'm like a Tech Nine. I don't... It's associate to anything it's just... no one specific mm -hmm. genre like I'll fucking I'll make a rock album one day I'll make a heavy metal album one day I'll do drum and bass I'll do I'll probably do like a couple fucking EDM tunes or it like whatever 
whatever I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I haven't yeah. found my specific little brand of whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because you see all the rappers who maybe bring grime or whatever mm. they were doing, and then uh, like their second, third album, you see it becoming more mainstream. You see them mixing it mm. with other people, but mm. it's, it's just business. Look at Dizzy, working with Robbie Williams, Calvin Everybody, Harris, mate. changes every Florence the game. Machine. I've, every it just time. brings in a wider audience. And, it, mate, and that's what I've always been. I've always admired people who are not afraid to challenge themselves and step out of comfort zones and challenge status quos and stereotypes. Do you know what I mean? That's why Tech Nine's like my fucking favourite rapper, mm-hmm. one of my favourite rappers, along with Mick Jenkins. Mick Jenkins, a big six foot five guy from Chicago that should be talking about bang, bang this and shoot him up this and all that, but he's mm-hmm. no, he's a poet. You know what I mean? See, I love Akala. Aye, aye. Next I got to support stuff. him twice, I know. I got mm-hmm. to support him on uh, the 10 year anniversary. Uh-huh. Phenomenal, the knowledge in oh, him. He bro. always says knowledge is power. That's where I got that from. It's just bro. next level, man. When he was in fire in the booth, I think it was, and he'd done, I think it was 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and phenomenal, the knowledge is in there. He's done like three or four of them, all of banging, Matt Thieves Banquet mm-hmm. as well. Man. But he says that he'll not get the recognition, obviously, because he's not talking about. Nah. Guns and asses and money and because nah, he raps with a fucking like borderline Oxford education, mm. do you know what Absolute I mean? Absolute genius. He is, mate. He is, mate. Genius. He is, mate. It's, fucking. Um, how did uh, Nas then come about? How did you get that chap at Na- the door? Nas came about um, through the agency that I was with. See, that was the fucked thing with that agency. They, I supported so many banging people through them, man. So many banging. Who? Fucking, well, Bugs and Malone, AJ Tracy, uh, Ghost, Ghostface Killer, Pharaoh Monch. Who else have I fucking supported, oh, man? Next level on as well, he's flying. Ah, I know, mate, I know, man. I know, man. Oh, fucking, who else have I supported? I'm on the podcast soon this year, Bugsy, you'll be on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man, actually, actually. But Naz is, they Naz say, is he's, like, uh, he's Naz elite. He's up there with your two packs, aye. M&Ms, and aye. all the, the American superstars. Aye, he's, people would say he's the greatest of all time. He came through his 90s. Aye, mate, aye, mate. Aye, aye, mate. Illmatic, man, like, made one of the best hip-hop albums when he was a teenager, man. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Lost his rhyme book on a train, managed to get it back, mate. Don't know how he done that in New York. Like, cunt's a fucking cunt, cunt deserves respect man especially for like his business mind as well because he mm. invested in a lot of shit before anybody was on, on it man and made himself so much fucking money man that's why he just sits back and does what he wants now aye. do you know what but but for a lot of shit as well I watched his documentary aye, on Netflix aye man like pff, his whole family's got a rich history man like, definitely one of the people I revere and respect the most out of any fucking MC on the planet man so like to actually get like literally a fucking bar here away for like getting <laughs> literally <laughs> and, and did you meet him no man <laughs> fucking, i met i met he's i met somebody for, i met a random guy that was like a roadie or something because i fucking i went like it's obviously all two academies got that mm-hmm. bit and it's a wee side door Aye. i went to the side door and fucking i'm like ah, shogun i'm here to do my sound check and it's this, I think he was like Nigerian or something, and there was like a kind of Polish, like two security guards, and they were just kind of looking at me, man. And I thought, oh, I've spoke too fast or something. I was like, I'm Shogun, I'm here to do my, my sound check. Like, and I was like, looking at like, nah, nah, you need to go find somebody. And I was like, man, like, how am I going to go find somebody? And so I'm arguing with these two guys. I'm like, ah, can, mm-hmm. can one of you please go and find somebody? Like, anybody mm-hmm. man go inside speak to anybody they'll know who I am he goes and finds the one guy that doesn't fucking know who I am some American guy and he comes out and he's like I don't know man who maybe <laughs> he's, you know what I mean like mm-hmm. he's confused as fuck I'm like fuck this mate like I'll come back in 5-10 minutes I'm going to go get fags just walking down to the wee spa and that fucking go to the, like the back of the the underground bit the fucking subway and then um, Two guys were like, Shogun, 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 mate. And I was like, oh, fuck's sake, I was walking with my pal Abraham. I was like, Ebby, man. I was like, I think these guys were a photo or something, man. I'll turn, I'll turn around to see. I was like, what's happening? Ah, you Shogun, aye, aye, don't They got to about what the distance between me and you and all that. Like, what's your real name? I was like, oh, no, man. I was like, how? Like, no, what's your real name? I was like, Joe Heron. And I thought, Oh no, this is a Polish man. Like, I'm fucked. Like what did I do? What did I do? I was like, fuck it, I'm fucked. I'll just take it on the chin. I was going to run, mate. I was like, ah, fuck it. They're not catching me. It's too mad, fucking pot belly cunts. And I was like, mm-hmm. actually decent shape at the time. I was like, you're, you're only catching me if I turn running boost. But pff, soon as they radioed in, man, it was like 
two meat wagons, CID more like proper mad sting operation for somebody that breached their for community service. That's what it is. You get that? done for theft, you never went in for community service and that's uh, where you end up getting 12 months. I uh, mean, I get done for a fucking failed fucking burglary attempt for uh, seven. How many attempts did you fail your uh, cu- like three, community three, service? Three. It's like Wiley, mate. 12 like, months? Aye. Uh, <laughs> did the screws know you were there at the day of the concert or was I, it just I, a I, they coincidence they were watching Man Star or something mate defo. somebody stuck you in I think mate there was posters or in Glasgow Some, and all that mate somebody's defo fucking oh well there you go there's no as if somebody's either stuck me in or they've mm-hmm. just drove past and went is that that fucking do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like, I'm sure I've got that wee cunt on my desk I'm trying mm-hmm. to get him because they were up at my mom's and my sister's for months man and I was just like down in London and shit do you know what I mean see like, that's the only thing man when you're if you're, you're trying to rise through the ranks and you're working with one of the biggest superstars in the rap game all the time and you're going to support them, were you ever shiting yourself even before you went or did you think it would be cool? <sighs> mate, I was that excited to support Nas, mate. Like, mate, I gave you power, the tune where he's talking about the gun and he's, he's, he personifies the gun, do you know what I mean? Talks about how a gun feels just getting passed for owner to owner and not see that mate that that's one of the tunes that made me want to be a rapper mate so like for me to get so fucking so close to even open up a stage for them man like and and the reaction for people in the crowd when obviously my pal physics like all my boys were there to do my hype and that they ended up kind of doing the show for me do you know what i mean i never get any fucking money for it do you know what i mean i never get any of my fee and i don't know who got it don't know if my agent kept it don't know who fucking got it mate but i didn't get a single fucking penny nobody sent me a penny when i was sitting in Pullman waiting to get fucking nobody cares mate nobody cares mate nobody Mm -hmm. fucking cares mate honestly so how did that affect you then when you were instead of supporting one of the biggest rappers all the time to then sitting in Pullman? oh mate i was fucking distraught mate i wanted to kill everybody in the fucking hall mate I walked in, mate, and my hair was a bit like longer than it is now, mate. Try to control that fucking skater boy, you know that? I was like, "Who the fuck are you talking to, mate?" Mm-hmm. Like skater lab, mate. I was just about to go support Nas, man. I was like, <laughs> talk to me with some fucking respect, you wee bum. Mm-hmm. It's like you punt hash and fucking what? what? Oh, I did a bit of the brunt. Between nineteen, twenty. I was nineteen, mate. Nineteen coming up for twenty. So how would that have been? How would that have enhanced your career so young at that age? If you go to do that performance, oh, mate, I was on, oh, mate. <laughs> irrespective of me doing the performance it fucking enhanced my career because the screws came in oh, there's wee Justin Bieber <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking superstar and all that push man but like see if I got to do that mate and I perform to the, the, the I perform to the best of my ability I know for a fact that there would have been two thousand two two and a half thousand people leaving that place like that wee showguns class he's banging I'm going to keep, my, I'm going to keep an eye out for him because do you think he'll ever work again? <sighs> nah mate nah Nah, I don't think so. I think if Etten, I think Naz knows my name. I think Naz knows who I am. Because he well, would have been... Well, fucking well, no, if he's got somebody to support them, they've aye, got the jail. Aye. That's what all rappers and shit do. It's always fucking drama. And he's a, he's no, he's a fucking... I think a Wiley, mate. Wiley used to... Mate, I think he booked shows, mate. Just get the deposit and then they'll turn up. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, cunts were going to fucking stab him and shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And he's an one free. He's got a bar. He's like, free time community service breach up. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's like me, mate. Looks it. I'm a bit <laughs> of Wiley and fucking Dizzy. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Mixed in the one. Mm-hmm. But pff, I, I lean towards Dizzy, though. Dizzy. What happened when you, how was the jail <laughs> when you were doing YOs? The YOs were just like. The YOs, mate, just fall out. Everybody trying to make their name for themselves. Just fall out of fucking wee guys and nutters, mate. Like, very hard to get a real conversation. Um, aye, quite stressful. But, like, I can't turn it. It was only like three weeks. So I was only in for fucking remands and that. But see if I had to sent- get sentenced in there, man. But fuck this, mate. Because it was full of wee guys, man. Heavy duty wee guys that just. <sighs> would stab you just to fucking get a bit of respect off some cunt that doesn't mm-hmm. even respect them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not about all that shit, what, mate. What was the plans then when you came out? Pff, I didn't even have a plan, mate. I just yeah. came, I came out, mate, and there was just shit lined up for us. It was just, because I was in all the, pa- in the papers and all that, and people wanted to hear from me and shit, and like, I, pff, didn't really affect my shows and that that much. Cause a I, lot of pressure, though, come on top when people start I mean, speaking I, and shit. It was mere, it was bit. It was more the frustration I like fucking see the way the papers fucking portrayed me, man. As if I'm this mad fucking idiotic thug. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> as it they've done it to me for mate, years. It's fucking, it's hardcore, man. I'd never heard that before. And like people in my street that I'd fucking like cut their grass and like we old women and that when they when they talk to me, <laughs> I was like, why does we Jean know what to talk to me like that? What? Like actual hurt me, mate. Actual hurt me, mate. I was like, this is fucking brutal. Like people in my own family, like actual. I was just like, this is brutal, man. Like, I'm not a fucking bad person. I was like, I just get left in my fucking own. They couldn't took it into fucking Davis and I ended up doing some shit and then everybody wants to care. As soon as I've done the fucking, like 364 days out of the year, I don't give a fuck in that one day where I fuck up. They're like, oh, I'm fucking, mm-hmm. you should be doing this, you should be living your life like this, you should be, ah, no fucking bother, man. Yeah, you could, listen, you could do a thousand good things, man, but somebody will pick up the one thing that, that you've it? done wrong. So this is society, that's life, but you must just pick the heat up again and just keep soldiering me. forward. Like, Persevere, fuck mate. everybody else. There's people that have been through way fucking worse than a bit of emotional trauma that I've been through, mate, and they pick themselves up and go to work every day and provide and and and, and do what they're supposed to do, mate. So mm-hmm. I think I'd, it's, I'm my own worst enemy. I'll convince myself that the world's against Aye. me and everybody's against me to the point where I'll end up, that real, that'll become my reality. Do you know what I mean? So, How did rap game come about? Fucking, um, my man ran some FA, put my name in. He was on the first season, done pretty well. You know what I mean? Showed the clean cut, the clean, they showed the clean cut, you know, mainstream kind of like, we've got a rapper that can, you know what I mean? Do all the, the, the fancy mm-hmm. shit, as I yeah. call it, you know what I mean? Um, I'm a bit more fucking left a field, you know what I mean? Left a center, kind of, I think that. But... I mean, I think he just put my put my name in. Says this is a, it'd be good to get on the show. They obviously went and done a bit, pff, done fuck all research on me because they were asking me shit that just like the devil just read like a Sun article on me. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Kept asking me mad intrusive questions about my family and whatnot. But I, it was after the the fucking laborious fucking screening process. It was just like come down to Birmingham and fucking let's get the show on the road. It was pretty straightforward, man. Like. I didn't even do half the shit I was meant to do for like, see the, like you're meant to, you're meant to do mad stupid videos, like hey I'm Shogun twenty three ah, yeah, from yeah, pay. Yeah. I was like I'm no fucking doing that, mate. Mm-hmm. I was like I've got more views and every, I guarantee I've got more views and everything than every can else on the show put together for the first season and the second season. No to took my own trumpet, but I'm no doing that, mate. Like people fucking know who I am. Know what I mean? But do you think that's what gets the producers and everybody's back up towards you then? I don't give a fuck about a, B- <laughs> a BBC producer. I don't mm. care about some wee fucking university fucking mob. I don't care, mate. Because you've done a video on your Instagram and says, fuck the BBC Aye. while you're still on the show. Aye, mate. What, like how did that, what happened there? How did that oh, affect you? Oh, they didn't you? like it. Obviously, no. You're working like for the BBC. It. I wasn't working for the BBC, well, you know. mate. No, I was hired. No, in fact, I wasn't. I wasn't even hired, mate. I was a fucking documentary piece that's what that show is a documentary so they don't need to pay the people on the fucking show do you know what I mean the lass is, is its own mm-hmm. she was brilliant as well you and Bang her were brilliant me. so Bang she me. was really good man Bang never me. faltered never stuttered never just destroyed Stutter, people man aye, mate, she aye. was brilliant man aye. fair play to her but some talent on it aye. some talent aye. and aye. you can see the pressure how hard it is when you People will think they're great and they stand in front of a couple of bodies and they just crumble. I know, mate. I know, mate. That fucking boy the first couple of weeks, mate. Oof. The boy with the beads in his hair. Just kept crumbling, the boy, aye. Yeah, aye, mate. It's it was, it, was a, pressure. it was a shame for him, but at the same time, mate, pfft, ended up, you were just like, get this cunt to fuck, mate. Like, There's no cut out for everybody. So how do you, because things seem to have changed then, it's enhanced your profile anyway. Mm, mm, mm. So how's that? Has it helped you a lot? If I'm, I mean... How can I describe it, man? Because nothing's really changed. It's weird, nothing's really changed, but it's just... Listen, you can get a number one single and nothing will change. I know, man. It's I all know, about I how know. you see the world differently. I nah, I don't, I don't think... That's what I'm saying. I don't think I've really... I think all it did was affirm a couple of things that I thought about, like, how they do these types of shows and documentaries are mostly entertainment. They're not really fucking documentaries, like, showing you the real facts of life and whatnot. And I was just on that show and I was like, how the fuck can this be a documentary? But he's all like telling us what to say, kind of thing. You're like, oh, can you give us this line? And the wee voxies, the wee fucking interviews. Scripted. Like, ah, it's like half scripted, half no. Like they just kind of wait to see if you say something that's poignant or noteworthy. Because and you were arguing with people and fighting and... 
Nah, well, I wasn't even if I was fighting, I'd been in the jail, mate. Cause, <laughs> and somebody else would have <laughs> been in the hospital. Arguing. Aye, mate, I was arguing, mate. Because mm-hmm. cunts didn't, cunt, cause cunts had never met a Scottish boy for the scheme. They all think it's haggis and fucking tatties and mm-hmm. neeps up here, mate. Walking and, about in skirts and drinking aye, whiskey. Mate, aye, they don't, they don't know, the, the real people really know what it's like up mm-hmm. here, mate. And you don't need to be a big, bad, fucking hard man to know what it's like up here, mate. Tough but, city, Glasgow, man. Mate, sit, Tough. Glasgow, Paisley, fucking Dundee, bits in mm-hmm. Edinburgh, everywhere, mate. There's bits everywhere Tough that are. And they think it's fucking fucking like the green belt up here mate <laughs> we're all fucking dancing yeah. about mm-hmm. fucking mad tribal nut- nutters or something mate. nah mate nah mate like some of the greatest fucking minds in the fucking world oh, of the biggest inventions in aye, the world mate, aye mate so, so we deserve our fucking respect mm-hmm. innit and I went down there with like a fucking did you have a chip on your shoulder a though, thousand Gunton? year chip on my shoulder <laughs> mate nah, I'm being uh-huh. serious mate did you feel like an outcast mm-hmm. I was ironically the black sheep in the house being the only white guy and being the only Scottish guy and proper Scottish as well do you know what I mean and they 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 love the banter they love the patter and not they love the way we say things and all that but see as soon as we start to get passionate or angry about something it's oh they don't like it they don't like it they don't like an angry Scotsman they don't like it unless they're portraying it in their own way do you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I just I took it upon myself to be like mate I, I'm going to represent myself the way I want to be represented, mate, and then they can fucking edit it the way they want to edit it, but I'm going to be going off my nut if I see things that will be edited in a certain way, and even, like, with the Mad Props challenge, well, like, oh, you didn't bring any props, mate, I did. I had glasses, I had gloves, and I had a wee slingshot thing that was all going to be incorporated into the fucking performance. Mm-hmm. As for a specific type of glove and a specific type of glasses catapult didn't, didn't care but with the gloves and the glasses the catapult wasn't going to work right cool they brought me the round gloves they brought me the round glasses mad gloves that they had to come off rapid mate. they had to like fling off like that and they brought me mad carry more gloves that were skin tight I was, like, I was like how am I I was like mate I was like, it's not a big deal but how am I meant to fucking and you brought me the round sunglasses and awesome mad like pre-mark kings man I was like bro I had a budget of £150, I spent £100 on a pair of shoes that re- that had Scottish shit on it and that, I was like, ah, right, fuck it, cool, like, because I'm just sitting thinking, like, props, like, whatever, man, do you know what I mean? Like, that's no my job to think of props, see, he's an artist, see when you fucking go and do a video and that, the fucking director will come up with fucking ideas like that, but mm-hmm. like, do you want to try this and all that, and then you'll bounce ideas off the back of each other, so I'm sitting like, ah, fucking props, I didn't give a fuck, but I was like, cool, I'll get my wee props, they brought me the dang props, and then they edited, edited my like my wee bits, my wee interviews after that to make it seem like oh, I've because see when the see when I say oh, oh I've 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 got no props apart for this, apart for fucking uh, these bad boys. There's a whole other sentence before that, but I'm like I, I fucking I got brought the wrong props and all that, so I've no got any props apart for these bad boys. They edited out the whole fucking first half of the sentence and gave gave them that, and it's like. Iron, kind of weirdly it worked in my favour because everybody was like oh he doesn't give a fuck oh that's mm-hmm. pure cool but I was actually trying to give a fuck and they fucked me over but that's so, all part and parcel with his TV that they, they, everything's done remember it's all about time so last so minute weeks so and weeks of footage to cut down to 45 uh, but that's minutes. the editing team you've got mm-hmm. the wee runners and all that that are meant to be on fucking job and they were on job for every cunt else but when it came to me it was like I was like cool bro mm-hmm. you know what I mean so what's the plans then for your future where, where does where this show gone gone 23 years old now you've you've, you've established yourself now it's just 20, a case of getting that break again hopefully if I can make it to 24 and 25 hopefully the music industry like I don't know man hopefully everything kind of goes back to normal and I can be in that like top percentage of artists who stay busy during shit like this do you know what I mean because there's only a certain amount of people that are getting invited to come and do shows that you know what I mean? The, the kind of online side of things now. So hopefully I can get to a position where I'm I'm in that kind of stratosphere where like no matter what I'm I'm one of the names that like every kind of booking agent or whatever thinks of. Hopefully I can just keep expanding the brand, get get more merch out. You know what I mean? I'm quite picky with that because I want the right materials and I want it to look the way I want it to look. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite stubborn that way. But um, projects, man, projects and visuals. Sorry, excuse me. For all this year, I've got a EP coming out. 
on January 22nd. Uh, I'm kind of like the featured artist on that. It's my friend uh, Sean Cosgrove's uh, EP. He goes by uh, Senga Mega Drive. That's his fucking production name. Well, it's mental. Mm. But he makes some good shit, man. So look out for that. And we've got um, one of the visuals for one of the tracks off the EP out now on my uh, YouTube channel. It's just Shogun. Do you know what I mean? What is all your social media? Uh, People can fuck. Get contact. Fuck. What am I on Instagram? Insta? What am I on Insta? Shogun on Instagram. But it's S H V G V N because I'm a hipster. Fucking uh, Twitter. Twitter is at S H O and it's phonetically spelt. So it's at E double S A I C H O H. Then. Fuck I just like Joe Heron on Facebook and Shogun on YouTube Facebook. And that? I've got YouTube, I just Shogun, like literally see if you go into any just type in Shogun, I'll be like the first, mm-hmm. second, third. So kinda. have you got to wait to get a record deal this year or someday that I don't f- one I, album, two albums, I, I I I don't know right now it's it's gonna be all independent, you know what I mean? Through um So is that just doing another tune, hopefully get another one like Vulcan it would go nah, viral? No, nah, no, nah, nah, not so much. I'm proper an album mode man and project mode now like it's a not so much about the singles it's about incorporating the good singles into a, a proper cohesive body of work now do you know what I mean and being a proper artist and <clears throat> learning how to like um, arrange my own stuff and just I become become more of an engineer and, and more of an MC more of a writer and what that's that's my plans just c- continue to grow and be learn around people craft. who are better mm. than me at it mm. and learn from them that's the best thing is to go with people that's more established that's totally. learned to trade and then you learn for them totally as I don't know who says it but if you're the smartest man in the room you're, you're in the ring room aye yeah, mate I, that's why it's, that's why it's like I like coming up back up from like those situations and coming back up here and being able to like divulge information and kind of we like cheat codes for people and that but at the same time I'm, I hate being the big fish in the small pond, I like to be the wee fish in the big pond, because there's more shit to explore. Mm-hmm. But um, that that's pretty much what I've got in in store for this year, man. Is just more shit on everything, more content, and definitely get these projects out. So we've got High Rise coming out on the twenty second of January. And How then can people get that on all streaming platforms? It will be available. I think we're trying to get some physical copies made, but it will be available on everything from the twenty second of January. Um, not got an exact date for the next EP with Britis and Kane a top tier lyricist from Manny um, that'll be like executive produced by Turkish Decipher um, looking to get some international features on it can't really say too much about that right now but be, it'll be it'll be banging it'll be mm-hmm. it'll be banging mate. who trust would you me. like to work with? Oh, who would I like to work with? Top three. Top three. Oh, who would I like to work with? Right. Anybody. Anybody. Gorillas. Are they still producing? Aye. Mm-hmm. Gorillas. Fuck. Tech Nine. I can't even say Dizzy because I'll work with Dizzy. I don't know. That's a hard question. Aye. So, Gorillas, Tech Nine. Oh, it's a hard one. Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar. Tech Nine, Kendrick Lamar, Gorillas. Is he in the jail on that as well, Kendrick Lamar? I don't think so. I don't think so. He's just about hunters of bloods and fucking mm-hmm. I think, Gangs I think, I think and damn near everybody else around him's been in and out and all mm-hmm. that. I think he's like the only one that's doesn't smoke weed, barely mm-hmm. drinks and all that, and he's like the most fucked cunt mentally. Like this is what I'm saying. Look at the lives that they've made, like the game, fifty mm-hmm. cent and all been shot, done what they've done I in the jails it, and it. they've made a massive career of their lives, it. man. I listen to uh 50 Cent's audio book, man, it's so motivational. It's mm. a motivational book. Just talking about how we go to the, the top of the rap game and then he, now he's in the top of the, the entertainment industry with power. Mate, Just all about his work ethic and belief. Even if you go back to and you watch the mid 
interviews with people and that's how talking about him like that. He was ca- he was capable. He so was, he was he done was, the boxing and the shit. Aye, mate, he was just knocking people out for the fuck yeah, it. He that started and, boxing when he was nine or aye, something. Aye, mate. Um, he's well respected, aye. Aye, mate. So he he was already up there. I think mm-hmm. that's why the transition into the rap shit made so much sense and that's why it, pff, as soon as he'd done how to rob the game and mm-hmm. dropped, started dropping all the mixtapes with G-Unit and all that, man, like, pff, mm-hmm. I think I think everybody at one point like wanted to wear all the G-Unit shit and, you know <laughs> oh, what I mean? The Ev- and that. Everybody, <laughs> man. Mm-hmm. I think I was about six, seven mm-hmm. year old wanting to fucking wear it because my big sister was listening to it all. <laughs> I'd, had the 50 Cent poster, see the one where he's stoning the... Uh, fucking get Richard I try and post on he's done he's just like glistening looks like a fucking nice, bodybuilder man like my sister used to sit and just fucking must just <laughs> like, sit and just <sighs> What's, uh, how's the heat space in that now? Uh, good mate good I think <sighs> cause this time of year man like Christmas and that's a bit fucking weird for me how come? just family stuff like there's a lot of arguments and a lot of like trauma for but this this time of year for me and um no last Christmas, no that Christmas just there, but the Christmas before I nearly died in, in hospital. For fucking appendicitis. It was nothing pure mad, but like I thought it was food poisoning. So I sat in my gaff for four days and fucking got to about the fifth morning or something and like I was like, I need to go to the hospital, this isn't it food poisoning. Like I, I'm fucking, I feel like I'm fucking dying. Appendix burst, man, you can die. Bro, I was, one of my blood markers, I can't even but the woman said, it was like, it was meant to be, be between five and ten, this mad marker, when you're healthy and that, for somebody my age, and it was like 233 or something, like she read out to me my bird, and like, I thought my bird, my bird's just like, she's chalk white, and then she's saying I'm fucking like, pissed yellow, for the, you know what I mean, like, it was weird, mate. I was in the hospital for like eleven days, twelve days or something. Like spent my Christmas and all that in the hospital, pure having mad fucking biblical hallucinations and shit, man. Like proper because of the fucking the morphine, whatever the fuck they were putting in me, the antibiotics and all that shit, man. And like three mad things every few hours. And it was like, I mean, I was actually a decent size and all that because I'd just come out of jail and shit, and I'd kind of been sticking at it and fucking melted all my muscle away I lost like three and a half stone in like 11 days mate like I was dog like this cause mm-hmm. I'd been throwing up fucking stomach acid or something like fuck knows what or mm-hmm. pure bile man it was like, even taking a drink of like icy water for like the next like three days after I got to the hospital it was like pff, mate it was like taking a shot of whiskey it was fucking mental Me mate that. Oh, mate it was brutal mate like my wee pal Fitzy he stayed like Hundred, hundred yards, say, like fucking two minute walk from my mom's gaff, and I was like taking like twenty minutes to walk around and all that, holding on to hedges and all that. But I was adamant, like for the day I got to the hospital, like, mm. I'm no fucking lying down on my back, fuck that, because I just spent eleven days like that, and I fucking hate, I hate it, mate. So I was like, I need to get up and go do something and get my strength back and all that. So fucking, <sighs> mate, I, was, I mate, I just, I don't know how, mate, but. I that bring back a lot of emotion in that then pain. Aye, mate, aye, because it was like that. I was like, that no gear to kick up the ass and go does, fuck no, me, it man. Does, I does need to make see, something see in my it. life. I was like, ah, mate, where's all the fucking the only person that came and seen us in the hospital and is still like there for me is my bird. Nobody you, cares, mate. Jail, like every hospitals, else, you only get a few. My family and all that, mate. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, you actually been fucking serious? Like, ah, nay, cunts even gone any messages and be like, you are right. After I nearly died, and then a month and a half later fucking I went down to London like I fainted in the street trying to go get the train to fucking go down for this rap game No, that they didn't give a fuck either I was like mate showing the fucking absolute dedication to it like, then I've got a cheek to sit and be like that oh fucking change your attitude No, that I was like mate see if I didn't have my fucking attitude mate I was like I wouldn't be the one cunt in my country that's done something with this type of shit if I didn't have my attitude that no matter what mate I'll get up and go and do shit do you know what I mean no matter fucking what, I'll, like, I'm a fuck up and fucking I'll be late to shit and all that. And, <laughs> An and, example of the and, day. S- and sleep in and whatnot. Uh, you know what I mean? Forget to set my alarm for the right time. And like, I'm a bit scatterbrained in that, but I have a fucking purpose. But this year, all these wee things that I, you put in place to be more constructive and to be mm-hmm. like, you've got the talent, you've mm-hmm. got the gift, but it's, it's not just enough to I know, go I know. levels. You I need know. to just 
have more structure and go, right, fuck it, man. You know what? I can work in it. Listen, we're a working process mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. You know all these wee things that you need to change, but to mm -hmm. open other doors mm -hmm. to get you through, mm -hmm. you, the ability's there. It's not, there's no question about it. Oh, man, it's just it's, all, you don't want to be sitting in five years and six years seeing everybody else still doing it. Nah, if Dizzy Rascal can still be 20 years in the game, then you can be as well. You're still only young, look all the shit you've been through. Mm -hmm. So it's all down to you now how far you want to go. Now I want to have you back on in a year's time and you're flying, you've had a top 10 in the fucking charts, you've, you're, everybody knows you, and you've said, fuck me, do you know what, I've done it. I know, man, I know, it's just dying on the, the last, like, the last remnants of fucking boyhood, in mm -hmm. it. you know what I mean? That's you're mature, man, and like, I think the rap game thing would have helped you, because mm -hmm. you're working with people who's established, mm -hmm. and I know you're like, getting told today, but you've obviously took it in, mm -hmm. because you have changed, the one of the songs you were talking about, shout out to Aberdeen, I get love for the sheep shaggers <laughs> or something. You can tell there that your voice would be more clearer mm, mm, as well. Mm. So you're learning. It's uh, all, it's still, all, still, all down to you. Uh, Listen, we learn to the day we die, it, but it's all down to you. Would you like to finish it on it, brother? Just thank you for having mm. me on, bro, and giving me the chance to speak about my, my story and my music and that. And shout out to every single Scottish MC that's doing it. And do you know what I mean? Try catch up to me one day. Not <laughs> for coming on today, bro, and telling your story, I appreciate it. Thank you. I genuinely are rooting for you, and, and hope all the best for the future, my brother. Thank you, Cheers. bro. Take care. Check out more of my podcasts on the right, and be sure to like, share, and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.